I am now eight seasons into the Word Made Digital podcast, and I've also helped lots of other people launch their podcast. So in this Word Made Digital tutorial, we're going to be talking about what tools I use right now to do podcasting, what I recommend to clients in their podcast launch, and why I switched from some of my previous gear. Hello my friends, welcome to Word Made Digital Tutorials. I'm Joanna LaFleur. In this tutorial, we're talking about gear for podcasting in 2022. What am I using right now? Hundreds of thousands of listens and downloads later, I've learned a few things, so I wanted to share them with you. The first thing that I wanna to talk to you about is the platform that I use. The current platform that I use is called Riverside. I love Riverside and it was a game changer for me. I started out recording podcasts on Skype. Yes, Skype, do you even remember what that is? Can you picture it? Uh, the reason is because back in the day, it was actually a very stable place to record a conversation. Then from there, I went to Zoom. Uh, but the problem is with a lot of uh, these recording platforms where you can do video and audio recording is it's all one big file. What Riverside does is actually take each person who's part of the, co the conversation, whether that's just you and a guest or even up to eight different screens, and it records each audio and video separately as a different track, which means you can mix it together later. So like if my dog's barking in the background here, no problem. We can actually turn that down while the guest is speaking. You won't even hear that the dog is barking uh, when we do the final audio mix. The other thing that I love about it is it gets the highest quality audio recording that you can. I think this is even more important than having it all on one track is because it's recording the highest quality audio on each person's device and then separately uploading it to the cloud where we can download and do the mix later. So, so even if a computer crashes, the internet's not too good, it's gonna have the highest quality from each person's computer rather than trying to pull a lower quality resolution uh, through the internet. So Riverside has been a game changer. There's tons of features. I'm gonna link it below if you wanna check out the platform. I can't recommend it enough. I use it for all my podcasts and all of my clients for about two years now. Next to the recording platform, the thing that I always get asked about is microphones. What mic am I using to record my podcast? And sometimes you might even see it. If you watch the podcast on YouTube, you might see the podcast somewhere in the corner of the screen. I've changed mics a few times over the course of eight seasons of the podcast. I started out with a blue Yeti mic and actually that's probably the mic I would still recommend to people who are just starting out or if you want to send your guest a mic to make sure that they have high quality audio, uh, you can literally buy it on Amazon and ship it to their house if that's something you want to try out. But I moved from the Blue Yeti to the big one, the one that everybody uses. Let me grab it here. The This is the Shure SM7B. And I used this mic for a while. Um, but I don't use it anymore. Um, and here's the reason why. Not only do you need this mic, um, which is a fantastic mic, but also you need, uh, to get it, the audio into the computer, you need this, uh, something like this, an audio interface. And then on top of the mic, the audio interface, what I also discovered is that for the Shure SM7B, you need what's called, if it'll get into focus here, you need a cloud lifter and the cloud lifter connects to the mic and actually boosts the audio. And um, those are all great. It gives you a fantastic sound. It is sort of the industry standard, but here's what I found. For the purposes of what I'm doing, it actually became really cumbersome, bulky, and difficult to travel around with. I used to pack all this stuff, plus all the cords and the power and all this stuff. I used to put that stuff in my suitcase when I went places to interview people. And maybe there are times that I still will wanna do that to bring mics and all the gear and stuff. But here's what I'm using now and loving it. This is the baby brother. This is the baby brother of the Shure SM7B and it's called the Shure MV7, MV7. And what I like about this one here, let me give you a size comparison. It's smaller for sure, but more than that, this one, Check it out, it has a USB plug. So I can plug, you can uh, plug this thing into your, if it'll focus on here, it will plug into your um, audio interface. But here, this little thing right here, it's a USB plug. And so I find it really light, 
really easy to use, really friendly for podcasting, where the larger mic is designed for more robust sound, like it could even record uh, the audio for music and a vocalist, where with podcasting, it's a lot more simple what you're trying to record. And so you maybe don't need to spend the money or have the big bulky equipment that needs to be, you know, tweaked and you gotta like make sure the levels are right and the gain is right and all that stuff. If you're not an expert at audio, I think that the USB mics from Shure are an amazing option for you. All right, so speaking of sound, let's talk about headphones. You're gonna want a pair of headphones if you're podcasting so that the audio isn't echoing into the room off your speakers and then being picked up by your mic. I used to use these, these are my, you know, my AirPod Pros. I, uh, I, have loved, I have loved these for sure. I keep them in this little case so that I don't mix them up because everybody's AirPods look the same. But actually I find because they are Bluetooth, they can be a little bit unreliable. And the last thing you want in the midst of a conversation is to have your Bluetooth connectivity cutting in and out. You really wanna hear every word of your guest. And so this big old rat's nest is uh, what I use. It doesn't need to be fancy headphones because um, it's just simply making sure that the sound is coming through. If you wanna use big Bose headphones or whatever, of course you can, I have those too. But these is, is really all you need. If you have some wired headphones, you can plug directly into your computer. It's gonna make a huge difference in making sure that the audio is good. You can hear your guest, but more than that, you can hear it consistently and you're not gonna see the batteries die on their Bluetooth headphones or a loss of connectivity of Bluetooth right in the middle of the conversation. It's happened to me and it's really frustrating. And, and then because of how Riverside is set up, you actually, actually have to pause the conversation and tell Riverside on a re-record that you are no longer using headphones so that it doesn't um, have the echo in there. It's a whole complicated thing. You can see what I'm trying to say is, Make sure you have wired headphones when you're recording a podcast. Light, let's talk about light in a podcast setup. If you're doing a video podcast, I would recommend as much as possible, get some either natural light or a ring light, a direct softbox light, something that you can point at your face. If, if it's natural light, you want to have the window on this, you know, on the other side of the camera, so it's creating soft light onto your face and onto uh, the camera that's picking up your video for podcasting. But and So natural light will do, but hey, if you can have a ring light or something small and compact that you can include in your setup, it makes a huge difference to get better audio, visual lighting for your podcast if you're also doing a video version. Another key tool in my setup is Calendly. Calendly is a scheduling app. I love this opportunity to book my guest in a really seamless way. So if you don't use Calendly or something like it, it means that there's a lot of emails back and forth. But with this, I can simply send someone who's going to be on the podcast a quick link. Me or someone on my team will send a quick link and it will give them lots of dates and times to choose from that work for both of us. And then when they select the date and time that works for them, it's gonna send them automatically all the information about the podcast. Here's the link and how to join. You know, here, here's what you need to be prepared for. Um, here's how you can set up your tech. And then also Calendly will send them reminders so you don't need to follow up with them. You know that they're getting uh, reminded before the call so you're not sitting there waiting wondering if they're gonna come. Calendly has been an amazing tool in the practical scheduling of my podcast guests. And I use it also with my clients and they have found it really seamless as well. Speaking of my team, I made a quick mention there to do with Calendly and our scheduling logistics. A huge shout out to my team. That is a key part of my podcast setup and how we help clients make their podcast happen. I couldn't do it without the team. So we have a team of audio, video editors, Brandon and Cam are doing that. And then Emily has been an amazing help with project management, overseeing the whole thing. And then we've also had a designer. It's changed a little bit, but right now, her name is Amber and she helps make graphics for us and makes it all come together. It really does take a team to make this whole thing happen. So if you're thinking about podcasting or you're wondering why you just can't seem to get your podcast off the ground, I hope you're seeing with some of these pieces that there are a lot of moving pieces and there is a lot of complication to running a podcast. There's logistics, there's editing, there's project management, there's graphic and design, there's content, there's building the questions, there's reaching out to guests, there's confirming the guests. There's all the stuff that you need to think about if it's working right, if it's sounding, there's lots going on in a podcast. And so if you're starting out in podcast, I, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, but don't be overwhelmed. We're here to help. There's some other tutorials right here on the channel that are about podcasting. We'd love for you to check them out. But also on our team, I wouldn't 
want to miss the opportunity to talk about Compassion Canada because Compassion Canada, who's been sponsoring this tutorial series, is an amazing partner to get my podcast as well as our Wormy Digital tutorials out into the world and into your ears. They are all about transformation through the local church, which is why we've partnered on this series. We're trying to help you as the local church do what you do, as well as partner with churches around the world to hear transformational stories on the Word Made Digital podcast, to hear what God, what God is doing around the world. Let me tell you a little bit about what God is doing through Compassion in the Philippines. I think of this young woman named Rhea, and she grew up in the Compassion program. She didn't have much at all when she was growing up, extreme poverty. She came through the local church into a Compassion program. And I love that she said, coming out the other side, when someone sees you, it changes you. And that's exactly it. Through compassion in the local church, children are being seen and noticed, beloved of God. And then through that opportunity, they get to grow physically, emotionally, and spiritually with opportunities they never would have had before. And Rhea now, coming out the other side, is a graduate and an alumni of the program. I love this. She's sponsoring a kid in her own community where she grew up. She's now sponsoring the next generation of Compassion Children. So would you consider it yourself? Go to Compassion.ca to learn more. Well, hey, thank you so much to my team for making these podcasts possible for you, the viewers who are learning together with us how to do podcasting and communications and digital content and so much more. We've got all kinds of tutorials here for you to check out. Why don't you hit subscribe so you don't miss the next one. We've got new content coming out every single week. See you on the next one.